untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a Mardu Colored Vehicles deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around a Grease Fang Okiba boss from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, the 3 mana 4 3 legendary rat pilot, says at the beginning of combat on your turn, return target vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste, and we have to pick it back up at the beginning of our next end step. And the most powerful vehicle that we can reanimate in Historic is Parhelion 2, the 8 mana 5 5 legendary vehicle with flying, first strike, and vigilance. And whenever Parhelion attacks, we create a pair of 4 4 white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are also attacking. And the crew cost is conveniently 4, so we can potentially reanimate Parhelion with Grease Fang and then also crew it, attack for 5 thanks to haste, and make a pair of angel tokens, essentially damaging the opponent for 13. We have to pick up Parhelion, but then on the following turn our angel tokens can still close out the game, plus we have a ton of other discard outlets to potentially discard Parhelion so we can reanimate it once again. So we can essentially present inevitability on turn 3 and kill the opponent on turn 4, which is very powerful for historic standards even. And then to assemble the combo we also have the full playset of Goblin Engineer, a 1-2 that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for an artifact card and put it straight into our graveyard. So turn 2 Goblin Engineer can search up Parhelion, and then turn 3 Grease Fang can reanimate it. So it's essentially a 2 card combo that's not too difficult to assemble. And then Goblin Engineer also has additional utility, as we can pay a red mana, tap it, and sacrifice an artifact to return target artifact card with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So sometimes if we already have a Parhelion in the graveyard, we can use the Engineer to accomplish other things, like maybe put a Wishclaw Talisman into our graveyard, so we can later bring it back, and then the Talisman is a way for us to tutor up our Grease Fang if we don't have one already, so the Goblin Engineer in a way can find the two different combo pieces. And then we also have Iker Wellspring as a nice value artifact that when it enters a battlefield or is put into our graveyard from the battlefield will draw a card. So sacrificing Iker Wellspring to Goblin Engineer is a perfect way to bring back a Wishclaw Talisman, but we've got some other cheap artifacts that we could sacrifice, as well as a one of Soul Guide Lantern as another Silver Bullet that we can potentially search up with Goblin Engineer when facing opposing graveyard decks, so we can search it up and hopefully put it in play in time to exile the opponent's graveyard. So that's the main game plan. Then to help us out we've got some draw discard effects. So we've got the full play set of Faithless Looting to draw two and then discard two. Can also be flashed back for three mana. So that can also help us put Parhelion into our graveyard if we happen to draw it. And the same goes for the full play set of Thrilling Discovery. Let's us gain two life then we may discard two cards and if we do draw three cards it's another great way to draw into our Grease Fang if we don't have one already. And then two copies of Season Pyromancer, which is a 2 2 that when it enters lets us discard two cards, and then we draw two. And for each non land card discarded this way, we get to make a 1 1 elemental token. Can also pay 5 mana to exile Season Pyromancer from our graveyard to still make a pair of 1 1 elemental tokens. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got the full playset of Esper Sentinel as a 1-1 creature that will tax the opponent whenever they try and cast a non-creature spell equal to the Sentinel's power. And if the opponent doesn't pay that mana, we get to draw a card instead. So very powerful against a lot of the non-creature heavy decks. And then also the full playset of Portable Hole as a cheap interactive spell that can exile target a non-land permanent if the opponent controls with mana value 2 or less until Portable Hole leaves the battlefield. And all these 1 mana artifacts we can also potentially sacrifice to our Goblin Engineer to find a Wishclaw Talisman, which enters a battlefield with 3 Wish Counters on it, can pay 1 mana, tap it and remove a Wish Counter from it to search our library for any card and put it into our hand, and then the opponent gains control of Wishclaw Talisman. Do have to be a little bit careful when using it, that our opponent doesn't get to search up any graveyard hate, so sometimes we have to wait until we have 4 mana so we can use a Talisman and play Grease Fang in the same turn, so we don't give the opponent the opportunity to use the talisman against us. And then we also have a one-off copy of Sky Sovereign as an additional vehicle we can potentially reanimate, a 6-5 flyer with a crew cost of 3, and when Sky Sovereign enters a battlefield or attacks it deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls, so sometimes if we need removal it can be better to go for Sky Sovereign over Parhelion, and then at 5 mana it's also easier to hardcast if needed. 
And then a mana base is pretty straightforward, just a ton of mana fixing, including some of the fast lands here. We've got a full playset of Inspiring Vantage and Concealed Courtyard, as we plan to execute the combo on turn 3, so these coming into play tapped later shouldn't matter too much. Then we've got some shock lands with a full playset of Sacred Foundry and Blood Crypt, and then some pathways to round out a mana base. Two of the red-white pathway, four of the black-red one, and two of the black-white pathway, and one basic mountain in case of opposing copies of Field of Ruin. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is very promising. We can even go for a turn one looting if we want to. Probably want to keep this for white, so play Blood Crypts. Discard Parhelion and probably a land. Can still Discovery next turn in case they take away Grease Fang with a discard spell. As per Sentinel, I could Portable Hole and Exile, although it's not really bothering me. So Gigantha and As per Sentinel, maybe your opponent's playing like a blue-white artifact deck, which could have Metallic Rebuke as a counterspell. So to prevent them from casting it, I think we Exile the Esper Sentinel. As opposed to playing Goblin Engineer. And then next turn Grease Fang can already bring back Parhelion. Red White instead. So I guess they could have removal for Grease Fang. Maybe they're just a burn deck. And so if they kill Grease Fang, I wouldn't be able to crew Parhelion or bring it back. So that could be a problem. But then we still have a Goblin Engineer to eventually find a Wish Claw. So I think we still go for it. But yeah, it looks like a Lightning Helix here could take care of Grease Fang before it reanimates. That's too bad. So it's gonna be a slower approach. So yeah, just a red-white burn deck it seems. Ooh, Stone Rain kills my white source. I luckily drew another one. Although maybe we don't want to expose it yet. So I can either Discovery Discard Engineer on the land, or I can play Engineer. And then I would probably put a Wish Claw in my graveyard. And then I can maybe bring it back next turn. I think that's worth it. So Wish Claw in the graveyard. And then I'll keep the White Source in hand in case of another Stone Rain. It's going to be another Esper Sentinel into Stone Rain, so not going to have the mana to execute the combo this turn, but uh, that's okay. I can potentially Portable Hole exile the Sentinel, although we're going to give them a Sentinel back if we use Engineer here anyway. So bring back Talisman. Now the problem, I guess, is if I use Talisman in my turn, the opponents can just search up another Stone Rain or Lightning Helix, which kind of defeats the purpose. So I'm probably better off uh, just waiting and then hoping to draw a land next turn so I can Talisman and play Grease Fang and hopefully there's no second Lightning Helix. Opponent puts Gigantha in hand, attacks, that's fine. And there's a land, perfect. So we can go for the combo. Now this doesn't kill the opponent on the spots, but it should leave us in a very favorable position. And next turn we could potentially bring back Parhelion once again, although Talisman could always get an answer for Grease Fang. Here our opponent could have some sort of sweeper, although with Gigantha it cannot be Sweltering Suns or Anger of the Gods. So I struggle to think of another sweeper that punishes me. I guess Deafening Clarion? Alright, it was a Solar Blaze instead. So that would have been effective either way. So yeah, I guess we'll have to find another way to close out the game here. 
So portable hole exiling the talisman actually works out in our favor. As we can now sacrifice the portable hole. Bring back another portable hole, I guess. Just so we get the talisman back. And then talisman can find another grease fang, but I'm not gonna do it this turn. Although I guess we'll also have to discard Parhelion in the first place. So it's gonna take a few turns to set up. So I can start with Discovery, discard Parhelion, Portable Hole maybe, in case I draw another Grease Fang. And then, yeah, still wait on Talisman, just hit my Land Drop and attack for one I guess your opponent has a cave that can block, so never mind. Opponent is probably holding a burn spell since they didn't tap out for Gigantha or attack with Cave. So we can expect them to have another removal spell for Grease Fang here. So I'm not necessarily going to go for it here. And instead I can keep churning through the deck until we maybe find like a Seasoned Pyromancer to apply a bit of pressure or Sky Sovereign, which we can hard cast. But I'm also not in a position to attack into their cave. All right, there's Seasoned Pyromancer, perfect. Now I could wait until next turn and just play another Goblin Engineer first. And then Goblin Engineer can find Icar Wellspring to draw. So they might kill the original Engineer. Uh, even Mind Sensor prevents the search effect. Okay, that was unexpected. I guess we still get to look at the top four, and we actually found the Acre Wellspring, that's nice. So... Get back Wellspring, sack Portable Hole. And now Talisman, also nerfed by the Mind Sensor. So we might end up just hard casting Parhelion this game, who knows. Um, I could looting. Given that I'm gonna play a Pyromancer next turn anyway, I guess that's fine. So we're putting maybe more of a red-white hate bears deck as opposed to a real burn deck. And then I'll keep the land which I can play alongside Pyromancer to refresh my hand. And then for now, the Engineers can accumulate a bit of value with Acre Wellspring. Bonecrusher stomps my Engineer. Another Wellspring. So, anything to get back here. Portable Hole sadly doesn't answer Mind Sensor. So, play Wellspring, see what we pick up. And then I probably play a land first, play Pyromancer, and then I can still activate Engineer afterwards. Right, there's Grease Fang, and sure, we'll sack a Wellspring to get back Portable Hole just to draw a card, or I can try and attack for one. I guess we'll attack for one. So our opponent is still forced to hang on to a Lightning Helix, otherwise Grease Fang kills them. So that limits what they can do. But they can still add a Bone Crusher to the board. Alright, so... I guess we'll start with Goblin Engineer. Bring back Portable Hole just to draw. And then I would like to find Sky Sovereign at some point too, which could kill the Mind Sensor. I have one Grease Fang left in the deck I could find. So Talisman only looking at the top four. 
It's going to make it kind of difficult to find what I'm looking for. So I guess I can force the issue on the Lightning Helix. Or I can flashback looting and see what else we can find. Thrilling Discovery we can cast. And Esper Sentinel is a nice one. And then I might want to hang on to the lands so I can potentially discard it to Pyromancer. And then we're still looking for a second Grease Fang or for Sky Sovereign. Opponent attacks. I guess I could jump with uh, Seasoned Pyromancer since we can always make a couple elementals with it. Just to buy time, I could double block to bait out a burn spell. That's also reasonable. But they're just gonna let the trade happen. There's the Gotha. This opponent still has the two mana to cast a Lightning Helix. So, now what? Can sack Wellspring to the Engineer to get back another Wellspring? Or I can go for Sentinel, which if they go for Helix would then draw a card. I guess we'll go for Esper Sentinel, and then we'll force the issue on Grease Fang this turn. Find another Sentinel, alright, so at least we get to draw two now. Go to combats. And there's a helix, draw two. And hopefully find our last Grease Fang or Sky Sovereign. There's Grease Fang. So that one we can play next turn. And for now, Pyromancer. Discard some lands, see if we can find Sky Sovereign. But hopefully they're out of answers for Grease Fang now. And Versuri get back a Burn Spell or a Stone Rain. Probably not that useful anymore. Goes for Lightning Helix, killing the Engineer, which was otherwise providing too much value with Acre Wellspring. But now our opponent's finally out of answers, and we should be able to win with uh, Grease Fang. A damage, I guess we could prevent a little bit. Just in case they have more burn spells to finish us off. However unlikely that may be. And then I can make some tokens with Pyromancer, perhaps. Might be better than playing another Sentinel. I guess another Solar Flare could potentially uh, reset the board once again, but then end of turn, two tokens from Paramancer should still be helpful. We can also just hard cast Parhelion at this point, so we've got a few options. Alright, and our opponent has seen enough, so ended up being a very grindy game where we needed all four Grease Fangs, but we got there in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Well, we can discard Parhelion to Discovery, to find Grease Fang, hopefully, and then a couple one drops for early plays. We'll see how this plays out. So, Discovery could keep Portable Hole if we're putting some sort of creature aggro deck or especially a Shaman's deck having an answer for their 1-3 creature is important. So maybe just discard Parhelion and Season Paramancer since we don't have double red yet. Or I can get rid of Courtyard since 
It's not helpful for casting Paramancer, although if I draw Grease Fang without a third land I might regret it. Close call. I think we'll try this to kind of hatch our butts. Alright, found a land and a Grease Fang, so... Now I can go for the combo next turn. Opponents with a turn 2 Burning Tree. Let's see if it's Gruul Aggro or Shamans. Based on their 2-drop. Looks like just Gruul Aggro. Alright, I don't think they're gonna beat turn 3 Grease Fang here. And our opponent explodes. Next turn we could have discarded Parhelion once again, but the Angels should be enough to get there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and what do we think of this hand? No black mana, and no Engineer or Parhelion to potentially discard, facing a Lotus deck. If it's an Aura deck, having double Portable Hole is very useful. So maybe that still makes this hand keepable. And then once we find black mana, Talisman can find Engineer, and then we're off to the races. If they're like a black-red Arcanist deck, then they're gonna have a bunch of discards to disrupt our game plan anyway. So I guess we'll try this. It looks like a burn deck instead. Probably just one exile their creature, and then next turn goes Sentinel, plus maybe another portable hole. Dealing with our creature means we potentially prevent Spectacle from happening. And it also gets rid of a wizard, which is relevant for a wizard's lightning. Play Sentinel. And yeah, we're just a discard effect away from ditching our Parhelion, which is also likely to find black mana for Grease Fang. Just gotta hope they don't keep up a burn spell to kill our rat pilot in response. Play with fire, opponent's gonna pay. And our opponent's stuck on two lanes, although sadly we can't really take advantage of that. So... We'll just have to pass it back. At least our opponent doesn't necessarily know what we're up to yet. But, um... Uh, the lands aren't cooperating. Now any fifth land that comes into play untapped lets me play Sky Sovereign, which is still pretty good. But ideally, we can find a looting effect and play Grease Fang alongside it. But it's going to be Sky Sovereign for now. Still at 12 life, opponent still stuck on two lands which means their hand is all spells. Can we find black mana? Opponent finds a land, so if they have Wizard Slining, they could still kill Grease Fang at instant speed. And uh, while I can play Grease Fang now, our opponent's going to be able to untap with at least one creature and a couple burn spells, so we could be dead. But what's the alternative? Wishclaw Talisman. I guess I could get a Seasoned Pyromancer, play Seasoned Pyromancer, discard Parhelion and Grease Fang to make two 1-1s, one and then I can crew Sky Sovereign and leave a token on defense, and then hope to get there with uh, Sky Sovereign. But then we also give the opponents a talisman, which can find an extra burn spell. So we might still be better off just playing Grease Fang, crewing Sky Sovereign, and hoping for the best. Although we kind of know for a fact that they have two spells in hand, so... I think we actually go for the Wish Claw line. Get Season Pyromancer. And then hope to draw another Grease Fang with a draw 2 here. Alright, we did. So now I've got an additional Chum Blocker back. Probably still take out Lava Runner. Although, 
With two spells, the Soul Scar is likely to deal more damage than Lava Runner, which could make the difference here. Let's see how this goes. And then now Grease Fang getting back Parhelion can certainly help us close out the game. Another Soul Scar, okay. I'll jump. And hope they tap out. So now they can still kill Grease Fang with a Lightning Helix. But I'll still be able to cruise Sky Sovereign at the very least. Play Grease Fang. Or I could looting first. Yeah, I guess we might as well do that first. Soul Guide Lantern. Goblin Engineer. I guess Goblin Engineer is more useful. Play Engineer. Can go for maybe an Icar Wellspring. Play Grease Fang and see if they've got a Wizard's Lightning or Lightning Helix here. If they do, I can still cruise Sky Sovereign with Grease Fang. So we at least make use of it. And then Sky Sovereign gets to attack. And does anyone else want to attack? Could maybe send a 1-1 one -one token if I kill Soulscar Mage, so the Pyromancer can jump, so we can make more tokens with it. And then 7 plus another 7 can close out the game next turn. Although we could still be dead to a combination of burn spells, especially if those include Wizard's Lightning, which they can cast for 1 mana. So I'll trade for Pyromancer. Static Discharge puts us to 3. And yeah, Pyromancer making 2 tokens should be enough here. I guess I could still have a 1 mana burn spell for the token. But we'll find out. Nope, they don't. Oof, incredibly close game. And see, yeah, it's possible that our kind of unconventional line of getting the Season Pyromancer worked out. Otherwise we would have been short on a blocker, which against the burn deck every life point matters, of course. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing white mana and a Grease Fang. We also don't have any looting effects to churn through the deck, so I think this is a mulligan. This is an easy keep. And then probably get rid of Sentinel, or we could risk it to get rid of a land, since we're gonna Faithless Looting to discard Parhelion, and we're pretty likely to find a land. And then I get to play Sentinel early too. Yeah, I guess that's fine. So turn one Sentinel, and then turn two can go for looting. And then keep double Grease Fang as insurance. And then the flashback on looting can discard Parhelion after we pick it back up. Opponent playing pretty much the same deck here, maybe a slightly different build. But yeah, being on the play is going to make all the difference as we find another Grease Fang. And our opponent explodes, they know what's incoming. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, my hand has Grease Fang, just missing Parhelion, which means either drawing Parhelion or Goblin Engineer, since we already have a discard outlet. So seems keepable enough. And then turn two, depending on the matchup, we might get rid of Portable Hole. Turn one Islands. Alright, there's Parhelion, so 
the turn three dream is still alive. If this doesn't get spell pierced. Just an opt. This card, probably portable hole and part helion. In case we need to dig for a second Grease Fang if the first one gets countered. Blue red. And a Sprite Dragon. Alright, opponent stepped out. Probably a blue red Phoenix deck. It is kind of impressive how consistently we can get the turn 3 combo. But the new mulligan rule combined with the redundancy that's built into the deck makes it pretty good deck overall, I would say. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, don't think I've seen this many turn 3 concessions playing Historic in a long time. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing too many combo pieces, I think, to keep. This is better, so we're looking for Goblin Engineer and Parhelion to discard. Turn 1 Sentinel, turn 2 Discovery. Opponent blue-white, and there's Parhelium, perfect. So, need red mana, and then we just need a third land, which we're pretty likely to find in four draw steps. Eh, I guess not. Can Discovery again next turn if needed. Oof, rest in peace, ouch. Yeah, that's gonna be an uphill battle. Well, I can exile the rest in peace, I guess, and then uh, keep going. So... We'll need to find another Parhelion. Good Grease Fang, at least. So even if they have a Lightning Helix to kill it, we've got a backup. And then, yeah, just gotta find a Goblin Engineer. Another Grease Fang. Could just cast it at this point, just to apply a bit of pressure. Start by attacking. And, uh, sure, I guess we'll cast it. Maybe keep up one mana. To play around some of the two mana counter spells. They did have the Helix, which they can pay for. At least that's one fewer removal spell to fight through. So, start by attacking once again. Hope there's no Shark Typhoon. And then now probably flashback looting over Plague Grease Fang. And I can play another Sentinel. Bolt kills the original one. Alright, so between Goblin Engineer times four and our other looting effects. Shouldn't take too long before another Parhelion hits the graveyard. But we don't want to give the opponent too much time either. Probably keep the courtyard in hand now. In case I need to discard it. Fateful Absence, at least, we get to sack the clue and draw a card. Yeah, 
Yeah, that turned to rest in peace. Bought the opponent a lot of time. I know what must be done. But at least we're not dead to rest in peace, which is nice. Poem gets to untap, and we get to draw. And that's a lot of land. Okay, Sentinel can go after Teferi, but we're probably dead now, as our opponent will be able to keep up more expensive counter spells. This was probably our last window to try and resolve for Grease Fang. And if they ever find artifact removal, like maybe a Prismari command, they can destroy a portable hole, put the rest in peace back into play. Their own portable hole also works. Alright, I think we can probably scoop it up here. Unless they go for Esper Sentinel. Maybe we can still draw another portable hole, since... I guess we didn't have a Parhelion in the graveyard yet, so a string of looting effects plus portable hole could still get there. Seems like it's going to be pretty unlikely. All right, another land. I think we'll scoop it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and what do we think of this hand? We've got an Engineer, double Parhelion, no discard effects though, so we might be stuck with Parhelion for a while. No Grease Fang in sight, and it's going to be a while before we can Engineer get back a uh, Wishclaw Talisman to get there. So I think we'll try Mulligan. This is better. And then... Tempted to just ditch the portable hole, although this early interaction if we need it. So it could also go for maybe a land, since we're likely to find one of Thrilling Discovery. Alright, play this tapped. Turn to Discovery. And hopefully pick up an Engineer soon. Green-White, is it a life gain deck or is it, interesting, a ramp deck? There's Parhelium, perfect. Just what we needed. And a portable hole can go. Right. Hopefully they tap out so we don't need to play around instant speed removal. Yeah, it looks like just a dinosaur deck. So turn three, Grease Fang should be good enough here. And our opponent explodes. Another quick one. So yeah, there might be a game where we have to fight through some graveyard hate or it takes a while to assemble the combo. But overall, I found the deck to be quite consistent at getting the turn 3 Grease Fang. Just make sure to mulligan aggressively to look for the combo pieces as opposed to keeping hands that don't have any and that need to rely on lots of top decks to get there. Since with the new mulligan rules nowadays, these combo decks are definitely advantaged when it comes to mulliganing aggressively. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.